Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. But let your yea be yea, and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing songs. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Divine Program of the World's History, another edition of the reading that we're doing today on this Sunday August 4th, 2019. We are here. I believe we are on, oh, let's see, page 204, 205 in the book. Ah, help me out, Yerk. I forget exactly where we stopped. 205 in the book, 146 in the PDF. Hmm, cool. So we just read this paragraph on the age of increased knowledge, and I think it hit Yerk and I like a ton of lead bricks. And we did this last session, Yerk, was it just on this paragraph? Yeah. And uh, yeah. Um, it was very intense. I wouldn't mind even doing it again, doing a second session of it. If you guys are opposed to it, that's fine. We'll move on. But if you're into it, let's do it. Well, let's just see where the spirit takes us. You know, it's not our intention to do double readings uh, and and to read that what we have read already once before. Also, for the people, it would be interesting to continue in the book and see what we have to say about what's coming next. Let's see where the spirit takes us when we pick it up where we left off yesterday and repeat the last paragraph, of course, that you just mentioned. But um, let me first introduce Brother Michael from Germany, uh, who is today with us again after having had such a 
hard time yesterday, so he can join us today. Hello, Michael. Welcome to our broadcast here today on the next reading of the Divine Program of the World's History. Yeah, hello, Brad. Hello, Jörg. Thanks for the invitation. As always, I'm uh, more like the silent listener and uh, hope I can do, I can add something of value to this lecture. Okay, so let's go into the book, and uh, we are on the age of increased knowledge. That was the subject we were spoke, uh, speaking about yesterday, of course, because the author made the point very clear that the development, especially the uh, scientific development, the inventions in the uh, machinery and uh, discovery in, uh, in the technological world, uh, it's really uh, a time of giving, uh, quote-unquote, increased knowledge to the world. The, the problem is, when we speak about knowledge, when we speak about, not <laughs> we speak about knowledge, we speak about Gnosticism, we should speak about wisdom. And there's only one place in this world where you can get wisdom from, and that's from the Word of God. So, the age of increased knowledge. Um, let's go back to uh, the time between 1800 and the beginning of the 20th century. Um, and, uh, until 1916, where the author goes to, uh, we have to understand that this increased knowledge was given to mankind most and for all by the devil, because the devil knows that he only has a short time. And the author makes a very important point that is highlighted here in green, that he says between 1800 and 1850, that time marked more progress than the previous 5,000 years in art, science, invention and discovery. Again, the next 25 years, between 1850 and 1875, more than the previous 50. And the next 10 years, between 1870 and 1885, more than the previous 25. So the point is that all of a sudden, there was placed a turbo on the motor, if you can put it that way. Huh? Uh, our normal uh, slow-running engine all of a sudden became turbo-powered. And with that, everything went into hyperspeed. Well, that's, that's uh, a word the people from today, most of the time the scientific, uh, scient, uh, uh, high, uh, what's it called, uh, sci-fi fans, science fiction fans would love uh, hyperspeed, yeah, because uh, it's, it's going into light speed. Well, the, the speed of light is not uh, a, a continuous high speed, it is a variable, yeah? it is not a, 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 a uh, how do you say that? Uh, in English, a, fix, a, fix, a fixed value. It's yeah, thanks. It's not a fixed value, but it is uh, uh, variable in speed. Yeah, you can even slow so the speed of light down to zero. Yeah, that it even stands. Uh, that's and that's all possible. But uh, what I want to say is that in that time, in the beginning of the 19th century, the devil knew, of course, what what's going to happen. He, was, he knew that the wound that was spoken about in Revelation chapter 13 that was afflicted to one of the heads of the beast would be afflicted in this century. So he knew that his time was running out and therefore he needs to speed up and therefore he needs to give people ideas to, um, you know, possess people with his spirits, with his fallen spirits, with his demons so that they can invent things to... Um, how, how do I say that? To give progress to mankind when everything that they invent, as I said yesterday in our discussion, when everything these people invent can be used for two things. It can be used for good and it can be used for bad. There's nothing bad about cell phones, but it's the way those cell phones are made and the technology is put, uh, uh, put together that hurts us. Yeah, This mobile technology that we have today is more bad for our health, then it is good for our health. Everything can be used for good and for bad. And the devil, of course, does never ever use something for good. Oh, he lets it appear on the outside to be good, but that's the same that he appears, you know. The devil or Satan is transformed into an angel of light, the Bible says. Yeah, He is the quote-unquote light bringer. So he appears in bright, shining colors. He appears right and justice and wonderful, and that's exactly what he does with all these inventions, that the people all say, oh, this is wonderful, we've never used, we've never had this, and this is so handy coming in, we can really use this, this is wonderful, this will easy, uh, this will easen up our lives, yeah, 
And that's why they adopt all these things so easy. It, it starts with this uh, plastic credit cards, you know, that you can pay by showing this credit card. Today, you don't even need to show this credit card anymore. There are countries enough where you just have to show your face and they scan your iris and they link it to your computer and the payment of your bank account. And you pay for your chewing gum or whatever you are going to buy in that shop just because you look at the cash register. Yeah. Uh, and people find that so convenient. Uh, it is so easy in use. It's so wonderful. That's how the devil gets you. And people never look at the bad side of it. And there's a very good example when you want to go into that. <laughs> because I'm sorry, I didn't want to start this rant. I wanted to read the book. But, <laughs> you know, when you go into the car company Tesla, for example, and you know that the CEO of Tesla is a high-level Freemason who is busy with all kinds of dirty stuff in the company called DARPA and in SpaceX programs and, uh, and all that stuff. And he is um, very hard working on, quote, unquote, artificial intelligence and all this BS, let me call it, that so-called makes it easier for mankind. Well, I can tell you one thing that already a few people know, uh, knew before me. Machines never buy cars. Yeah. So when you put all the people out of work that they don't earn any money anymore, who is going to buy the produce? Right. The problem is, well, when there's no people anymore who buy produce, what are people good then for? Okay. So what are we doing with all the people? We just switch them off. As Brzezinski said it, huh? he said in the past it was easier to control a million people than to kill a million people. But today it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. So when the million people aren't even going to produce anymore or to, to consume anymore, they are useless. And when they are useless, you just dump them because, you know, that is the philosophy of the theory of evolution. Huh? The survival of the fittest. The ones you don't need anymore, you just get rid of. And that's what's going to happen. And that's what started in the beginning of the, 18th, uh, of the 19th century. That's why we had in the, uh, in, the, in the late 18th century, we had the overthrow of all the established governments. And, and, uh, and, and we had all of a sudden coming up the spirit of man, where the Bible was put aside and man just took his knowledge from himself. Me, 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 the same thing that we have today. And uh, the Bible is put aside and mm -hmm. God is put aside and everything is not important anymore but me, but mankind and all that we want to have and all that we want to do and all that we want to achieve. What God wants, what God provides, not of importance because there is no God but me and I do as I willed. And that's the completely new age agenda that started in the beginning of the 19th century. And all this technical development we've had the last 200 years is because of that. Because the devil knows he only has a short time and he needs these developments to get rid of most of the part of mankind. So that only those can still be here on this earth and live that bow the knee to Satan. Because that's what he wants. That's what he asked of Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 4 when he... Um, Mm -hmm. when Jesus Christ was in the desert and he was tempted by the devil and the devil put him up on a high mountain and said all these kingdoms of the whole world I'll give you if you just bow down and, and, and worship me and Jesus Christ said get hence for me Satan it is written thou shalt worship the God thy, uh, the Lord thy God uh, or the Father thy God only yeah? and I'm, I'm paraphrasing but you get the sure. gist you get the gist. Yes. So the the important point is, uh, Jesus didn't take the offer, but a man took that offer, and that man is what we call today the uh, the Pope. He is the CEO of the Roman Catholic Church. He is the head of the Satanic um, synagogue of Satan. That's why it's Satanic because it's the synagogue of Satan. It on the outside appears Christian. But when you know them by their fruits, as Jesus told us, don't look at what they say, but look at what they do, you know that the Roman Catholic Church is the synagogue of Satan, and he, the Pope, is on the head of that institution, and he is the one that bows his knee to Satan, and that's why he is given all that power by the beast, by the dragon, as it is written in Revelation 13, again, Revelation 13, and that's why we are in the... Catch-22, uh, caught between a rock and a hard place as we are today. You know, we want to use the technology, but then we have to take the bad with it. Hey, you want to use your cell phone? Okay, then going to live with it, then you're going to get cancer. You want to use your cell phone Ooh, comment, 5G? Comment, then comment. Think, 
then live with it that you are going to be uh, circumcised or uh, that, that your that yeah. your um, uh, how is that um, how do, that your fertility is taken away because of all the frequencies and all that stuff. Yeah, please, Brett. I didn't want to start a rant here, so please interrupt me. No, no, that's good. Uh, I, I want to encourage your rant, Yerk, as much as possible. You know, and it's it's uh, it's in timely fashion. You know, we're we're living in the day and age of increased knowledge, and now it's just hit an exponential curve because now we have all the access to all the history online, and you can look it up and you can study it yourself. You don't need anyone. Just go and do it on your own. And all you need is the time and the space for it, really. And this is really important to prepare yourself to take the time and think things through carefully because there's a lot to consider here. And I myself can vouch for that because uh, I'm just blown away by what I'm learning from old books. I mean, just blown away by it. And, you know, it's been really neglected these days. And, uh, yeah, the church history. Let's talk about church history because that's what this book is all about. The second half of this book is really about European church history, which is very controversial. And, uh, yeah, I mean, um, if you have a family that's involved with the church, you know what I'm talking about. You know very well what I'm talking about because I have a family that's very involved with the church, specifically my mother. Right now, she is in Europe. She is visiting uh, Norway with our relatives for a... Um, a family reunion. She offered to bring me with, but I'm just here busy working and I'm not interested at the moment. When I go to Europe, I want to visit Yerk and I want to visit Michael both. Uh, that's my main interest if I go to Europe and when I go to Europe. But for now, um, yeah, she had just called when I was doing the session just now and uh, I just quick briefly called her back. But the point is, that this age of increased knowledge has also brought uh, a big red flag with it because, uh, yeah, as Yerk had already alluded to, we have the Gnosticism uh, that has uh, really established itself a long, long, long time ago. Um, it is know. the epitome of learning against learning, Brett. Yes, it is. It is the epitome of learning against learning. So, I wanted to get back to this point on biometrics that Yerk brought up because uh, I'm very concerned for really everybody, not just myself. I have friends that use the smartphones, that use the fingerprints, that use the face, uh, what do you call it, Fa face recognition. And, um, you know, I was just, for fun and games yesterday, looking up uh, biometrics. You know, just a Google search, simple Google search. Click on the first article, and, it, and I'm reading it. And, yeah, who owns your biometric data? Oh, well, you do. Do you believe this malarkey? Do you actually believe it, dear listener, that you own your biometrics? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but they talk about cryptography. Who are the masters of cryptography, my friends? Yerk probably knows. Michael probably knows. Does it begin with a J? <laughs> the Society of Jesus? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Oh, well, they're using the name of Jesus. They can't be bad. Really? Gee, I think you ought to research that a little bit more if you think that way. But unfortunately, here in America, a lot of people think like this. Since they use the name of Jesus, they can't be bad. Oh, really? Hmm. A society of Jesus taking the Lord's name in vain what does that mean 
Hmm. I ought to think about these things for a while. Really study what Jesuits are. Don't just take the words uh, for granted. You know. Read Code Word uh, Babylon. Yeah. Code Word Babylon. Thanks for reminding me, Yerk. I have about 60 <laughs> videos to make yet. And um, yeah, well, hopefully I can get them on my channel without losing it. And that's what I intend to do. But one step at a time. One step at a time. And for now, I think it's important to get as much truth out as possible about this church history. And in the age of increased knowledge, how has this increased knowledge entered into the church building or the church, uh, shall we say, the ecclesia, the gathering of God's people, those who profess to be with God and to enter heaven, that's a lot of people. That's a huge number of people. And how many of these are going to be disappointed in these day, this day and age? I don't know. It's not for me to judge, but I'm very concerned. How about you guys, Michael, Yerk? I think in the in the modern times it's maybe or it's high likely the Jesuits, <clears throat> but it's just also the the same thing um, as as always. It's just the high priests in disguise. I think in ancient time the high priests were also the ones who were using symbols and symbol language to communicate with each other with hidden meaning, with a cold meaning, and so. I think this uh, whole thing started actually um, when uh, Satan deceived. Uh, or how to call it, uh, or, or Satan was uh, being uh, misleading uh, Cain into slaughtering Abel. And, and so I think the, the, the things that always uh, people withdraw their knowledge uh, means that they have something to hide. And, and that can be not the right message to, to point out to the, to the people. And it's not righteousness also. So every, everybody who has something to hide uh, surely serves the dark side. And the so-called high priests in every culture, for example, for the, the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, um, Sumeric, uh, Persians, and so it's, it's always the same. They are, they are actually serving um, Satan. But they are telling the people another agenda, telling the people the exoteric agenda, the exoteric message. And the, the real hidden occult knowledge uh, has, will be hidden from the, from the irregular pupil in order to convince them that they are um, dealing with things and their teachings are righteousness. And, and that's, that's not the case. And that's why I think it's a, it's a main problem is that your enemy is not, not only Satan, or the high priest, but your main enemy is the crowd, the majority of people believing in the wrong te teachings of the Antichrist from the beginning. I think that's a, that's the main problem because in the Bible there's a there's a, there's a verse, and I think that that you can cite it much more better than me because I would have to look it up, and it says that uh, the people will slaughter you, uh, and uh, think that they will doing uh, God's justice and God's a favor. Yeah, and they I will the throw you out of the synagogues and uh, they will even kill you and think they do God's work. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's the main problem. The main problem is that the majority is not informed. That was always the case in every mm -hmm. culture. And I think that's, uh, that, that's the main problem. If the people would be informed, um, it would make a difference. But actually, nowadays, people are so selfish and so um, just looking for their own uh, purpose just for their own benefit that it, it it really for most of the people who are not in the right spirit it does actually make no difference if they uh, hear the the truth but because they're not interested in that because it actually not reveals to them any kind of of, of benefit um on, on, on first glance, it's it's all just for the long run. But people don't have the 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 breath for the long run. Actually, they just wanted to be satisfied with uh, with uh, eating, drinking, smoking, 
having sex, much mm -hmm. money, big cars, and, and that's a problem. The just the value of real knowledge is very much underestimated and it was right from the beginning because the people think okay when there are high priests when there are churchmen when there are clergies uh, then i can do my my, my, my material stuff and then and just uh, going out for a walk um sunday morning sunday of course um, to the church and that's it and so i did my i did i do have my share it's just that it's just a materialistic thinking. You see that after all, yep. it's just it's just yep. all a kind of of time wasting. And if you will be asked uh, after your existence in this material world, what did you do with your entire time? Uh, then most of the people would say, Yeah, I was sitting in front of the television. I was uh, doing a fornication. I was uh, just uh, having fun going to the football, soccer game, or whatsoever. But actually, who's reading books at this moment in, in this in this time? And I think that's just a trick of the seven, of of the devil called Satan or the the dragon or snake or whatever you call him. It's just his um, his purpose is that he would like to to steal your time with all the the documents, with all the bureaucracy, with all the the things you have to do to to struggle. Uh, through your life and I was blessed to have the time because I was raised from uh, from my mother um, and, and so I did had time to study many books but I think that uh, nowadays people because of so much distraction does have less and less time because they have to be informed how the new smartphone works um, they have to uh, in the new Mercedes-Benz I have been told there's a it's, it's an operation manual about 600 pages as you see, you will be, you, you have tons of information, but you're not able to, to come through and you don't have any time left. And that's, uh, that's also the, 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 my, my thinking that uh, the over technology is so much complicated because then you will be lost and all the atheists claiming that they are actually not believing in anything, they do believe in anything because they are believing in their technology. And technology and, and, and artificial things ah. are their god. You see, there. I think you're talking about sophistry, Michael. Yeah, but actually, you see, it's just, just, just. If you do the symbolism, if you see the raging bull mm -hmm. from the Lamborghini car, right. for example, yeah, you see, it's aggression. So it's a it's very a vice, aggressive. Yeah. It's an aggressive automobile, yeah. So, if, for example, and yes. um, and 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 so it's just it's all about aggression and speed. And and with speed, you cannot concentrate on the on the real important yep, stuff. Yep, you miss a lot. You miss a lot of you the miss detail. A lot. And that's why, in in my case, I learned a lot from animals because they are only focused on drink, eating, drinking, sleeping. <laughs> and maybe a little bit playing, but they slow you down, and yes, and, and suddenly do. out of uh, suddenly out of the blue, yeah, right, right. you're focused and you see that whale. Maybe it's just all the all the purpose in life in this in this world and this, this existence is about um, spreading the gospel, and and uh, loving uh, the next one the same as yourself. And and that's about it. It's just believing in in, 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 in in God and spreading the gospel and loving the other as yourself. And to that uh, knowledge or to that uh, conclusion, you cannot come if you are totally distracted from technology and and this this day of rage of of uh, very much distraction. It's just an over. Um, it's just an information highway. It's just an information overdose, and that's the point of it. People get so sick, and then uh, they, they they are in the end of the day they don't have any energy left to to hear reading, or it, it's it's just that we we or you guys are doing the are doing them then a favor so they don't have to read the book by their own but just just can listen to it for example me i'm listening to it in the car listening to it while jogging i'm listening to it do it while doing other stuff, so. But it's just the people don't have any time because um, they are being manipulated that the social pressure is so high that you seem to act or to be a fool if you do not know how the new smartphone or iPhone works. And that's, uh, that's Satan, that's Satan himself, that Satan is just uh, doing um, it's just making you busy with any less important stuff to keep you away from the word of God. Yeah. And that's, that, that's just his main purpose with his first entrance in the Bible. He says, yeah, he had God really said. Yeah. Because then people don't know, oh, I don't know, don't remember. I did have so, so less 
not too much time on my hands. I had to concentrate on on, on the on the digital programming of my washing machine. Uh, then I had to to uh, to look up uh, on on the new information. Um, then I did had to do several updates on my computer, and everything keeps you busy. And in the the quite the opposite, and then I'm, I'm I will finish my my end comment here. <laughs> um, in, in quite the opposite is the temper of the Almighty God, which slows you down, which has, who has so much patience because he knows when the right time is that somebody will be awakened, somebody will receive the Spirit, somebody will be saved. But yourself, you're lost because everybody is functioning. And the opposite to he knows that he's got only a short time yeah, is God who has all the patience and all the time in the world because he is the creator and he is outside the time. So he can really pull on strings and he has created everything. And so we are, I think we are best off if we keep the pressure out of our lectures and keep anything out of our lectures which will then speed up anything. Um, in the first lectures I was very concerned that we do, did not any so much content because uh, time the, the clock was ticking you see but um, as I'm getting older and hopefully a little bit wiser from studying the Bible I really realized that uh, it's just all about um, the details and all about that you are very careful because he, the, the, the devil, is always uh, trying to trick you. And that's the thing which you, you're not aware of it if you are in, in, a, in, a, in a busy uh, mode. We have to study it carefully and we have to correct each other. And I'm very thankful that I may be part of this lecture and I would like to hand it over now. So we can go back to the book then, huh? Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's try to finish this part of the page maybe today. <laughs> All right. But it was it was very interesting what Michael had to share there, and uh, we didn't have his views yesterday, so Absolutely I'm, right. I'm glad he shared that with us today. So now let's go over it again. So uh, since 1885, the author says, another 25 years have passed away, and really it seems as if the last 25 have eclipsed all the past last hundred, and still the pace increases. Well, we can vouch for that living in 2019, right? Let us look back and see what we have gained since 1800 when the older order of things of the past 5,000 years passed away. As I read to you yesterday, we come in 1807 when the steamboat came. Between 1803 and 1829, the locomotive, or quote-unquote iron horse, came into existence. 1838, photography was invented. The electric telegraph in 1844 and 1846, you had anesthetics, chloroform, etc. Electri uh, iron ships from 1850, I 1858 gives us the electric light. 1863, the ironclad battleships. 1866, the Atlantic cable. 1876, the telephone. And then 1895, X-rays, animated pictures, wireless tele uh, telegraphy, the submarine and the aeroplane up to 1907. And between 1875 and 1916, modern machine shops and engineering develops in thousands of ways undreamt of by our fathers. Automatic machines are almost human in their subtle intricacy and accuracy. As I told you yesterday, well, think about the robots and the quote-unquote um, artificial intelligence uh, that you have today and that is coming in the near future and therefore we advise you to go to watch that video from True Three Media channel. Besides the above we must mention the tremendous advance in knowledge in connection with surgery, medicine, chemistry and a hundred other and I would even put it between brackets or quotation marks hundred other quote-unquote sciences because the Bible says, speaks of science so-called yeah pseudoscience because it is based on the knowledge of the world and not of the wisdom of the Bible truly knowledge has increased in our days as never during the whole world's history then we go to chapter 12 of Daniel and verse 5 where we continue reading in the 
King James Bible where it says, Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of those things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the worlds are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So to make yourself wise, first and for all, read the Bible, and second for all, read a true history book like this one from Albert Close, where it continues to tell us what our Lord foretells about the wicked at the end. Our Lord certainly does not teach that things during this age are going to gradually grow better and better until we reach an ideal state, until everybody owns him as Lord and Master. Our 20th century advanced thinkers until the war broke out in 1914-80 were sure the old school were wrong. They were sure the world was growing more Christ-like, and that no time of great trouble was ahead. Now this doctrine came out of their own heads, and not from the Bible. Christ teaches that at the end the wicked will be severed from the just by the angel reapers. If all are to be converted before Christ comes again, there will be no wicked to severe, to sever. Sorry. Note carefully what he does say. He also tells us that the gospel has to be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. He does not say they are to be converted. They are to hear the gospel. It is estimated that within the next 20 years the gospel will have been preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Now this is of course something that we can look upon in the year 2019 that we live with the invention of the internet at the end of the uh, 20th century that now we can really say that the gospel is to be heard all over the world. That does not mean as he says here, that they are to be converted. No, it just means that they are to hear the gospel. Oh, there are many who heard the gospel, but who just didn't care. And those people you have had 4,000 years ago, those people you have had 2,000 years ago, those people you have had last year, and those people you will have next year. But they have the chance to hear the gospel. And when they hear the gospel, and they are chosen of God, he will draw them to the sun and rescue them. But therefore you first have to hear the gospel. And never was it as easy in a time of the history of this world as it is today to hear the gospel, to see Ooh, the comment. gospel, to read the gospel. Yeah, please, brother. Yeah, Jörg, you know, uh, I think of this scripture about uh, subverting the hearers which means to destroy the hearers, which means there will be people that hear the gospel and will be devastated and turn like a rabid dog on you. And you know you're dealing with the adversary at that point. And I don't know about you guys, but I got a lot of people I know like this. When you start trying to Get, de get down to this nitty gritty with them and you tell them the truth uh, it's like the scripture says am I now become your enemy because I tell you the truth they turn against you as a rabid dog yes they do because they don't want to hear it uh, because they are possessed of the wrong spirit yeah and I think it is especially brother Michael who has a very profound experience in that regard not only 
the last years, but especially with this one woman that he has known. He always tells me when this and this comes up in the conversation, all of a sudden <laughs> she turns into a rabid dog against him. Right, Michael? Mm. You want to share yeah, that with us? Like uh, no, it's just quite obvious that every time I'm just uh, citing the Bible, for example, or speaking out the truth, the plain truth. So you see that uh, <clears throat> it's just so obvious that uh, she's uh, switching be be between her personalities. <coughs> Pardon me. And it's right. just uh, the, the same thing around. So then, then out of out of a sudden, he's a, she's a, shouting at me and accusing at me uh, of things which I did not do and I'm a, I, which I'm not not doing and and have never done. And uh, then um, sometimes um, some time period later, um, she says, "Oh, I have to apologize. I didn't know what uh, what I've said. Uh, that was not correct." And so. And that happened now, I don't know, I think that it happened five times in the last uh, one and a half years. And so it's it's actually no coincidence. <laughs> and therefore I, I know where the problem is. And uh, now I had the discussion with her um, and uh, I was just uh, saying that, well, I read the Bible and, and, and as, I, if I was, as I was mentioning the word Bible, <laughs> and uh, suddenly the curtain falls again and said, eh, you don't have to talk about it late, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, she, she just <laughs> fell. She, she, yeah, she just totally uh, sorry. lost it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's every time the same. It's just, uh, just the same thing around. At one time I was uh, vice, taking, on, taking a tour on the bike and uh, we came uh, in on a small, small uh, forest road, and uh, just we was we were just uh, slowly uh, biking there. And uh, she told me, "Well, you told me that the um, Catholic Church is a church of a church of, of Satan and this and that and so and and." Uh, and but but this and that and I said to her, well, you see, the pre people are not the problem. Actually, the people are not the problem. The problem is that we would be far better off if Satan and his demons would not be thrown out of the of of the heaven. Then Satan Satan has not revolted in the heaven and was uh, uh, th thrown out and uh, cast down to the earth. Then you wouldn't have that misery here. And it was half of a second, and she shouted at me, that has absolutely no effect on my life, and she went away, and I didn't saw her, and she didn't go on the phone for almost 20 minutes, and I was very concerned that she might uh, do something harm to herself or so, and then I, I found her, I picked her up on the motorway. And uh, we never ever talked about it. But afterwards, she told me then that I didn't know. I wouldn't, didn't want to have contact with you again. Um, I, I, I'm not interested in that stuff. Uh, but but on the other hand, um, she's she's having a, a, an, an Indian dream catcher in her uh, sleeping room. Uh, but she doesn't know. She of course she doesn't know the real meaning of it and and the real purpose. But she's just so superficial in that regard. And I don't think that uh, I, I think that she has been leading from the wrong spirit. But I cannot in that in my in, in the in the in this time in my position now I cannot do anything about it. But to notice it and uh, yeah, make my own conclusions. And that's every time I'm mentioning the Bible, every time I'm mentioning God, or any time I am mentioning anything positive like love, like caring for each for for each other, and so uh, she she's not interested. She's only interested in the material world outside but it's it's so it, it, it's 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 really sometimes funny that uh, she's switching it's it's like a little bit like like if you know that famous britney spears video where she was asked with uh, someone something of of not utterly importance and out of a sudden she was uh, 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 behaving like a five-year-old yeah and it's, it's so that 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 kind of uh, manipulation and uh, mind control things um, can happen, will happen, and did happen. And my ex-girlfriend is a very interesting example for that, uh, because if if she would be the one person which was really serious by having an argument with me, why she isn't? Why she isn't? She is the person that uh, is excusing. Is asking for an ex for an for an excuse afterwards. You see that uh, just one one big uh, big uh, sign that 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 it's not her who's speaking. 
Well, there was a very interesting example that you shared with us there, Michael, but I think that people can even more relate to the simple point that when you are a Bible-believing Christian and you go out there and you speak to anyone in the world and you speak about some things that really matter, just because the conversation turns that way and, 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 and then all of a sudden you say to people, well, haven't you ever asked yourself why this is this way? And then all of a sudden they are interested and they want to hear more. And then when you say, it is written, that is the moment when they all turn away. Or when they all turn against you as a rabbit dog. Mm -hmm. They have interest in hear what you have to say. But the moment when you come with the word of God, that is the moment that you address the demon that is in them. And that demon doesn't want to hear about that Bible. Now, many people will now say when they hear this and say, Oh, Jörg, you are crazy. You say that everybody is demon-possessed. No, I'm not saying that everybody is demon-possessed, but I say that everybody is led by a spirit. And you are whether led by the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, or you are led by the spirit of Satan. And therefore, you don't need to be satanic in, in everything that you do. You just need to be man. You just need to be of your own. Things just have to come out of yourself. Things just have to be gnostic in the way that you do them. And you won't even recognize them for being bad because you don't have the truth to mirror against. You don't have the Bible to mirror that against. And when then somebody comes and holds you again and, and, and tells you with the words of God, with the word of God, with the Bible in his hand, that the things you are doing are wicked, then all of a sudden you turn against them. And I think this is an experience that Michael has, that Brett has, that I have, that we can make over and over again when you go into the world and when you have a conversation. The moment you bring up the word of God, the people turn against you or they are not interested anymore. Oh, no, leave me alone. I don't want to know. Ah, oh, the Bible. Oh, that's bullshit. I don't want to hear about that fable. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. fairy tale. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. That's what they do. They ridicule you. Huh? They and mock they, you. And, and they mock you. And with that, they mock God. But not as yeah. God is not to be mocked. He is the powerful one who sits on the longest level in the end. yeah, And he will show them where the real power is. But, but that's not for us. We can only try to bring the gospel out there. And we live in a time today, in 2019, where we really have the power to bring the gospel to the people with the internet, with all these technical appliances people wear all the time. I mean, when you go all over the street today, all the people are putting their head down. Why? Not because they like to look, like to look at the pavement and like to see where they're going, but because they're looking at their smartphone. And they are only looking at the smartphone for entertainment when everybody should have a Bible on there and read in the Bible all the time. Well, then the smartphone would actually be used for something wonderful. That's what I meant in the beginning when I said things can be used for good or bad. Smartphone, That's right, you're smartphone is not bad intrinsically, in, 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 intricately, I think that's the right word, yeah, in itself, but for what it is used, that is bad. Was it intrinsic? Ah, that is a tough yeah, one to that's pronounce. Yeah, that's the word. That's the word I mean, Brad. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. You can't even pronounce it. So come on. <laughs> I think the people on the screens will know what we are talking about intricately yeah. or something. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, it, 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 something can be used for good and bad, and the devil takes care of that. All these inventions are used in a bad way, only to. Um, advance the way of yourself. You, you, you are important, not God. We should always put God in the very first place. And I have devil... to laugh here because you know it's morning here, and I still, I, I just, I can't wake up enough to pronounce words right. <laughs> but if you were to approach me in the evening, it would be a lot better, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I still have two German readings in a few hours. Maybe after that, I can contact you again and you can... Yeah, uh, that's can... the way the cookie crumbles, Jörg. <laughs> <laughs> that will be in about seven hours or something. We can oh, talk then again. It's fine. <laughs> okay. No, but I, I, I think the people understand what we are talking yeah, about here. And, 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 and the, the point is that we live in a time and age today 
um, that the gospel really spreads all over the world because of the technical advantage that was there. But the problem is that people don't look for the word of God in this technical world anymore, even though they have the possibility. You know, you don't need to buy a printed ah, King James Bible. You can go on the internet. It's intrinsic, intrinsically. Yeah, okay, that's the word. Thank you. Intrinsically. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not a native speaker. That can happen to that's me okay, sometimes. That's you know? okay, brother. So. I just, I'm, I'm kind of like a parrot. When I hear someone speak a certain <laughs> way, I just repeat it. <laughs> hey, that's the musician in me. Yeah, that's the musician. And by the way, I listened to this, this video that Yerk sent me yesterday by uh, a band called, uh, what was it again? Bona? Uh, Boney M. Boney M. Yeah, Rivers of Babylon. And there's a song called The Rivers of Babylon. It's actually a very good song. Wow. Yeah. yeah. In the sense that it's catchy. It it's is. got great rhythm, great yeah. vocals. Wow. I, I mean, I'm hooked. But Babylon? Yeah, they are speaking of the Babylonian captivity, of course, you know. But uh, they use uh, they use a big part of Psalm 137 in their text. Uh, Zion, when they think of Zion, huh? and I cried when I thought of Zion, which is a reference to the Bible. When you know we have the New Covenant and the Old Covenant. You know we shouldn't even call it the New Testament, and the Old Testament, because it really means the New Covenant and the Old Covenant, right? Yeah. And the Old Covenant was fulfilled. That's by really Jesus what Christ. it should be. Yes, and that's, that's why right. he, and, and that's why a he much made a bigger new... picture now of the gospel, don't we? Yeah, yeah much because... bigger picture than we've ever been told, and they, you know, that's what I'm reading in this this uh, article on the Bible in the in the ninth edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, the very beginning of it. Very, very interesting, provocative little. Uh, study that would be to, to study that document. But anyway, I don't want to draw too far away from this. That's about this one here, uh, William Robertson Smith. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. That's the one mm -hmm. you showed us here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, yeah, yep. anyway, I think uh, we, are, we are very close to one hour, so let's see what do we have to continue in the reading today, in the book today. Um, Christ teaches there will be good and bad to the end. No universal righteousness. Oh, that is bad Ooh, news wait, for, all the, for, for all the ecumenical people, right? Yeah? Excuse me, just a sec. I think you should repeat those last couple sentences just to make sure we have continuity here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just, the last I'm just, paragraph? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just running ahead to this one because I'm not going to start reading this because this ah, is uh, got chapter it. 13 I of, see. Of, of Matthew. That's for next time. Huh? It's ah, just, got it. okay. it's just that the head is here, the 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 headline of the next under paragraph or under I'm chapter sorry to sub chapter is Christ teaches there will be good and bad to the end, no universal righteousness. Now, yeah. when Christ teaches there will be no universal righteousness, what does that do to the teaching of the so-called ecumenical people? Right, it condemns them that they are not of God, that they don't speak the truth as it is, as it is written in the Bible. Uh -huh, is, Yerk, how about 1 John chapter 4, verse 1? And through... I don't know that by heart, brother. I'm 1 sorry. through 4 we studied yesterday? No, but we talked about it yesterday. And remember uh, what this does to ecumenism. I should have it open. I don't have it open. Shame on me. Oh, well, first okay. John. I can I can open my Bible right here to our reading yesterday. So first John chapter four verse one. Verse one Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Yeah, very interesting part. And also, just the the headline that is highlighted here now by, by the author, uh, who says, Christ teaches there will be good and bad to the end. Yeah, you know, the tares grow up with the wheat. No universal righteousness. 
This is a total condemnation of the ecumenical movement. This is the total condemnation of the new world order, where everything is made to be one. Yeah, That reminds it, me of the condemnation in, in the book of John, too, Yerk, where it says that... Uh, you know, I, I got to paraphrase it because I don't have it in front of me. But, uh, you know, light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So we've been condemned. Yes, we've been condemned. And our only chance, our only chance is through Jesus Christ and his free gift through grace and faith and love. It's our only chance. So just to bring this to a conclusion, for the fourth time, finally I try to read this. Christ teaches there will be good and bad to the end, no universal righteousness. So that means no new world order in a biblical sense. So when you're a Bible-believing Christian, you should always oppose the ecumenical movement and you should always oppose the making all one, a pluribus unum, out of many one, uh, as you Americans have um, written all over the places on your dollar note and on your uh, on your dollar bill and on the, the capital, uh, on, on the freedom figure that is on your capital building and all that stuff, that always says, a pluribus unum, out of many, one. No universal righteousness. And what's another word for universal? Catholic, right? There is no Catholic righteousness. Huh? So, when we go back to this last few sentences, as Brother Brett asked me to do, they are to hear the gospel. It is estimated that within the next 20 years the gospel will have been preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. Now he is speaking of 1916, speaks of 1936. I tell you, even take it 100 years instead of the next 20 years, and in the next 100 years the gospel will have been preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, surely with the invention of the internet at the end of the 20th century. The interpolated headings in the following scriptures are the authors, and this is where we're going next time into. Yeah? Christ teaches there will be good and bad to the end. No universal righteousness. That's what Christ said, and Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by him, and if he, if he says so, that there will be no universal righteousness in this world, then that's the way it is. So you can better look for the place where righteousness really is going to be, and that is in the Word of God, in the book of the Word of God, in the only book that counts, the 1611 authorized version of the King James Bible, the only preserved true English-speaking Bible in the world today, in 2019. Yeah, and with that, I'm going to leave it for an end comment to Brother Michael and Brother Brett to finish this up. I have said what there was to say for today's broadcast. Thank you very much, and until next time, Maranatha. Thank you for the reading, Jörg, but I'm not able to make any end comments because yesterday I've lost my best friend, and I'm so that sad. I'm sorry. Okay, then we will leave it over to Brett. Are you still there, brother? And otherwise, I'll close it up for the reading for today. Brother Brett has probably been taken away to the telephone and uh, couldn't attend us here for the closing down of the broadcast. So join us next time with the 60th reading of this wonderful book of Albert Close, The Divine Program of the World's History. And until then, read your Bible. Maranatha. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us 
lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep, that your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, We will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy, and sell, and get gain. For as ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire.